I spoke a little bit about uh, how art evolved from the cave paintings to uh, more defined structures, uh, sculptures made out of uh, stone and ivory, and how I connected uh, the formation of a structure in the human society and how art can help in forming that structure. I would like to emphasize a little bit more on the structure, uh, structured society with art. Um, for that, I'll go back in time about 15 to 20,000 years ago from now. And uh, from one of the artifacts found, we can tell, we can uh, analyze how the human intelligence reached a highly evolved state that we can relate to even today. One of the structures, uh, one of the sculptures found was that of a bison uh, made out of reindeer antler. And you can tell that the bison uh, has its head turned and its tongue is uh, elongated. You can probably, uh, it's licking a wound or it is uh, bitten by an insect or a tick and it is just soothing its skin. Um, now this structure was found on a, on a fragmented uh, uh, fra fragmented piece found on a, on a spear thrower. Now we can tell that the human being had evolved to such a point that they wanted to own a personal, a personal item with their own personal engraved art, artifact, art or something that depicted art. Now that itself is is uh, evolved state of the human mind where I even today's day and age we want something that is personally engraved that we can call our own so that was that was one of the discoveries um, if we go further in time there was another sculpture once again made out of uh, ivory uh, it is of two reindeer swimming you can clearly tell that uh, it is the sculpture has a female reindeer with a male reindeer swimming behind her, mm -hmm. and it was uh, when their uh, body parts were examined, it, it was clearly depicted that the one in the front was a female and the one at the back was that of a male. Now, uh, a couple of things that that we can learn from these sculptures is uh, the the human observation skills had really evolved that by that time uh, how can we say that the antlers on both the reindeer were fully grown and it is known that uh, the antlers of both the male and the female species of the reindeer are fully grown during the autumn season when they migrate uh, that's when uh, they are in their prime from the antlers to the fur to the meat so clearly the human beings were observing the phases and the habits of animals or various other species. Also, how the structure was made, how it was formed, that process, if we study it at that time, can be related to the process of creating an artwork in today's day and age as well. How did they create that structure? Uh, the, the part, the tip of the ivory, was uh, carved or was molded uh, using a stone scalpel, using a stone uh, stone tool to smoothen it out. And uh, after that, they created, they enhanced the artifact a little bit more using the stone knife and uh, scraper probably to smoothen it out and give it more definition and uh, intricate details. They were after. After the artist created the structure, they coated it with uh, iron oxide and water to give it a uh, polished look. Uh, from that, uh, they also probably used some kind of leather to make it smooth and polish it further. How were the the most delicate features of the eyes and whatever engravings they had on that skull, on that on that structure? Well, they used uh, the finer stone tools to make the intricate details of the eyes. Now that is a highly enhanced process starting from uh, inception of uh, producing such an artifact to actually producing it and finishing it. 
that process can be identified by artists even today's day and age. If I want to paint something, I will prep a canvas, I will paint it, I will layer it in, in, in uh, different phases and when it's done, I will finish it with the varnish and I can say that this uh, painting is done. So I would like to thank those artists because their, their art is preserved over thousands and thousands of years. Now isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I just wanted to share that today. Thank you for staying tuned.